Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host, CJ, and y'all remember this. 3D studios have new breakthrough capabilities with Mac Studio. Artists can now interact fluidly with more extreme geometry and run complex particle simulations in a fraction of the time. They can even work with massive environments that were previously impossible to render. That statement really perked my interest and curiosity. I worked semi-professionally in the 3D design space for many years, and I can say while Macs have been a significant, if not dominant, part of the music, film, and photography industries, they haven't really been a useful tool in 3D design, simulation, and rendering pipelines for, well, a while now. PCs with NVIDIA graphics rule that roost now. In fact, since Apple and NVIDIA's falling out, some 3D apps like 3DS Max, which is what I have the most professional experience with, don't even support Mac anymore. So continuing my series on the base model M1 Max Mac Studio, you can check out that full series here and be sure to subscribe for future videos. But today I'll be challenging the cheapest Mac Studio to some particle simulation and rendering projects in Blender. Now, the bulk of my experience with particle simulation work is in Maya. However, because Blender is much more obtainable for the masses, and I think probably the 3D development software of choice for the bulk of users looking at this specific model of Mac Studio, and because Blender runs natively on Apple Silicon now, I decided to go with it. So I'll be demonstrating two projects. First, a pretty simple fluid sim, and second, an equally simple but more demanding explosion simulation. Let's just jump into the first project, and again, I kept this simple. I just grabbed the starting cube in the project, raised it a little, and hit it with a quick liquid modifier. This one command sets the bounding box, creates the fluid, creates an animation across the 250 frame timeline, and even applies a material. And if I mesh the fluid, you can see the water splash down into the invisible domain. Now, this very simple sim did crash on me a few times until I figured it out. For whatever reason, the M1 Max system here doesn't like timeline baking the sim. In the physics tab under cache, you can select how the sim bakes, and I typically keep it set to replay for smaller projects like this, which bakes the frames as you move through the timeline. But if you move through the timeline too quickly here, it crashes. So I just set it to all, which means once I need to, I can just manually bake the sim. And with that set, I had no more major problems. I did run into some UI problems with menus and dialog boxes not loading, but this isn't terribly rare for Blender on any system, Mac or PC. Back to the project, and first I looked at a very low resolution liquid simulation using the Eevee renderer. I tweaked the water material to give it a little more realism, and I lit the scene with an HDRI image. I baked the timeline at a resolution of just 32, I enabled some of Eevee's tricks, ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, and volumetric shadows, and then did some test rendering to find a good balance between quality and time, ultimately landing on a 1024 samples per frame, and the 150 frame timeline rendered out in 1 hour and 12 minutes. And just like in my previous videos for reference, I'm comparing the Mac Studio to my Threadripper workstation, which it may be replacing here soon if it meets my performance standards. And for a more fair comparison, as after all, I did purposely build my workstation for 3D design and rendering, I'll also be more directly comparing the Mac Studio to my basic under $1,000 gaming PC. And even though this first project is very simple and not too demanding, we do start to see the disadvantages of the M1 Max's low-powered integrated GPU cores as compared to the dedicated graphics cards, with the PC handling the full animation output in 21 minutes and the workstation in just 9 minutes. However, the Mac Studio is a significant step up from my M1 Mac Mini, as a single test frame on the Mini took over a minute compared to just 22 seconds for the M1 Mac system. Now, Eevee is a great renderer for stylized graphics or animations for things like animated shows or movies. For example, the 2018 film Next Gen was done with Blender, but if you want more realism, it's not the best option. So I bumped up the system demand by kicking up the realism and switched to Cycles. And with Cycles, I was able to build a much more realistic shader, which I was able to visualize pretty well as I worked on it in the render mode viewport. I also added an impact surface, scaled the domain outside the boundaries of the camera view. I left the HDRI to light the scene, but eliminated it from the render view for a transparent background. 
And one area where the Mac Studio was very impressive was in baking the timeline, able to do it 35 and 37% faster than the PC and workstation respectively. However, grabbing and rendering a median frame, again, we see the M1 Max's weaknesses. Cycles does support GPU rendering on Apple Silicon now, so I did enable metal GPU rendering, and I tested every possible combination of settings here, and the fastest settings were GPU rendering with the supported feature set with both the GPU and CPU selected as the render device and no experimental ray tracing. This is the same for optics rendering on the two PCs, and while Cycles was never great at leveraging the CPU cores in a hardware accelerated rendering pipeline, not like say V-Ray, it usually only shaves seconds off, but I was surprised that the M1 Max's 10 core CPU shaved up to 25 seconds off the test frame, which is the same as the workstation's 32 core Threadripper, as opposed to just seven seconds for the PC's six core 12400. With these settings, it took the M1 Max four minutes and seven seconds to render the test frame, which is a huge improvement over the 21 minutes and 53 seconds it takes just the CPU to software render the frame, which is actually a full minute faster than the i5 12400 software render speed. But adding the RTX 3050 into the mix gets the job done in just two minutes and 16 seconds. The workstation does it in just a minute and six seconds, while the Threadripper alone does it in seven minutes, 43 seconds. Render times for the full timeline were nine hours exactly for the Mac Studio, four hours and three minutes for the PC, and just two hours and 15 minutes for the workstation. That was water, let's move on to fire with an explosion simulation, again using the Blender Mantaflow particle system. Now, partly because I needed help figuring out the ever-changing Blender UI, and also to forego having to extend this video with a full explanation of the project and exactly how I put it together, I simply recreated an explosion simulation from a tutorial I found. I'll leave a link to that video from Iridesium in the description below, and you can see pretty much exactly how I built the simulation. I'll just say that there were no issues while working on it. Blender on the Mac worked and everything was very quick and responsive. All the settings and parameters affected the sim exactly as intended with no weird bugs. I was able to build the sim very quickly and while the render view was significantly slower than I'm used to, it was responsive enough to build the shader for the sim. To get a lower resolution but fairly realistic explosion, I went with a resolution of 512 and again the Mac was able to bake the timeline fastest at 44 minutes and 10 seconds while the PC and workstation each took over an hour. Again, grabbing and rendering a median frame at a sample rate of 512 played out about the same with the $2,000 Mac taking 54% longer than the $900 PC and at almost three times the cost of the Mac, the workstation did it over five and a half times faster. Rendering out the entire 150 frames took the Mac 14 hours and 23 minutes compared to eight hours and 42 minutes for the PC and just two hours and 38 minutes for the workstation. So I guess the ultimate question is, should you buy the Mac Studio for 3D simulation and rendering? The bottom line is no, but there are of course caveats. If you're primarily gonna use the Mac Studio for one of the things it really excels at, like video editing, music production, photo editing, iOS or Mac OS software engineering, and 3D stuff is just a hobby, then yeah, you can definitely do a lot with this machine. The M1 CPU cores are fast and even with just 32 gigs of memory, you can create very detailed high-res models or model large scenes with multiple assets. Modeling, rigging, animation, creating simulations, none of that is a problem on this machine. The limitations come when you start getting into look dev and rendering. Creating a single shader for a single asset was a little slow, but doable. But if scaling that up and developing object and world shaders and lighting for large and complex scenes or the massive environments Apple was talking about, that's going to be cumbersome with the slow viewport rendering. And when it comes to final rendering, yes, it will eventually render pretty much anything. It'll just take a really, really long time to do it. And I know some of you may think, whatever, render time isn't that important. Just hit render and go on with life when it does its thing. But let me show you an example where that's, well, bad. While the 150 frame explosion was rendering on the Mac, like 
it's doing right now, I was able to render a 250 frame animation of it twice, two different angles on my workstation. And what I got was a very glitchy final output. This is something you really can't see until you see the full animation in real time. Now, this is an easy fix by either increasing the domain resolution or adding a fill light to soften the shadows and the smoke, and I only lose about three hours in the process. If I had to do this on the Mac, that would have been over 20 hours before I discovered the problem, and then another 20 hours or more if I had to up the resolution to render the animation again, hopefully getting the correction done right on the first revision. Now, my testing was limited to Blender today, but between this Mac Studio, the 8GB M1 Mac Mini, and the 16GB M1 iMac, I've tested Blender, Maya, ZBrush, SketchUp, Fusion 360, Cinema 4D, and the results are all the same. In the CPU heavy tasks, modeling, rigging, animation, simulations, the Mac is great and holds its own against even more expensive systems. However, when you get into the GPU specific tasks, texturing and rendering, this is where the price to performance takes a dive with a simple RTX 3050 based PC delivering up to twice the performance for half the cost. Optics and Blender does a good job of leveraging the Nvidia RT cores to render and more professional applications like V-Ray take the hardware ray tracing to another level. So while software ray tracing implementation can be improved on Apple Silicon optimized software, it can never get to the level of hardware implementations. CUDA acceleration and now RT acceleration is one of the reasons NVIDIA based PCs have replaced Mac Pros in most Hollywood and even indie animation studios over the past 10 years or so. Now, yes, this is the base model Mac Studio with just a 24 core GPU, so upgrading to more cores will increase the performance and the scaling is pretty good, but it's not linear. For example, while my Mac Studio has three times the GPU cores of my Mac Mini, it only sees about 2.7 times the performance increase in Blender. This is the only testing I can do personally in-house, but looking at the third-party benchmarks that are available, it looks like a 33% increase in cores up to the 32-core M1 Max model gives you about a 20-25% to performance boost. But then doubling to the 64-core M1 Ultra, the numbers varies for reasons people are still trying to figure out, but in 3D performance, the max I've seen is about an 80% increase. So doubling the cost and the core count doesn't double the performance. However, if you're like me and you don't care about some irrational loyalty to PC or Mac and just want the best tool for the job, today you can build a system with better performance in Blender than my workstation for less than the cost of the cheapest Mac Studio. I included a PC part picker list in the description below for that. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. Be sure to hit that like and maybe consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.